here, oops, the mouse is broken, so I gotta use this, this telescope to um, The first uh, one represents the four sine theta over pi, represents just um, the first term of the sum. Then uh, four sine three theta over three pi is when I add that next term I get. So here I just have a regular sine wave for the first row, and it shows the circle uh, and how that traces out their sine wave uh, in the xy plane. And then I keep adding terms here, and with each successive addition of terms, I add another little circle on uh, to my system here. And then um, the waves that are obtained uh, from those uh, become closer and closer approximations to a square wave. So I'll just play this real quick again. You can kind of see how the circle relates to the waveform there. It's pretty cool. So I'll just show you on the graphing calculator real quick. Um, that's a little description back here. So if I'm in radian mode, So I'm in radian mode here, and um, I just have the very first term shown. So if I do my window, and I'll just do a zoom trig to get a nice window here. So there's my first waveform, just a regular sine wave based on one circle. Okay, and then the next one, um, I'm going to go ahead. So my next term is. Uh, four sine three theta over three pi. So if I go back to my y equals, and I add that on plus four sine of three x over quantity three pi, and I think I need a pi. Uh, four sine theta over pi, Okay, so if I do uh, the two terms shown, to add those two terms together, the graph that results is a um, little better approximation to that square wave. You can see that sort of oscillation going on. And then uh, the next term, so they start to follow a pattern. I'm gonna have uh, add a four sine of five theta over five pi, so if I keep the first two terms and then add plus four sine of five theta over five pi. And I'll just double check that. Yep. So if I graph that, then we'll get the third wave form, which is an even better approximation to the square wave. So this kind of thing is used a lot in um, electronics and physics uh, applications. Um, this is an example of something known as Fourier analysis, which if you take uh, physics and engineering or higher math, you might learn about that. Anyway, pretty cool. Um, that's a little gift there on Facebook that'll help you visualize uh, these, these uh, waveforms here in terms of circles, so pretty cool. So any questions before we go ahead and get ready to start? No? All set? So let's uh, pick up. I want to finish uh, section 6.2 today. Um, and then your quest uh, on uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, is going to be over uh, 6.1, 8.1, and just the portion of 6.2 up through uh, the three functions of quadrantal angles um, that we got to on Friday, OK? Um, so the material we're doing today, the multiples of pi over 6 and pi over 4, uh, et cetera, that's going to be on quest number 2 next week. Okay, so uh, that's this week's material, so that's going to be rolled into next week's quest. So um, continuing. So we covered um, the trig functions of quadrantal angles. Any questions about those? Um, there was a table in your textbook, uh, you know, and I made a table in class uh, how to find the trig functions of the quadrantal angles. Um, so pretty cool on that stuff. Excellent. So um, let's uh, do an example maybe of that. 
Um, just to recap, we might uh, represent the angle in standard position and then use points on the unit circle to find um, these trig function values. So I want to find sine of 540 degrees and cosine of 540 degrees exactly using the unit circle. First of all, let's represent that 540 degrees as a, some angle in standard position. Okay. So how many uh, rotations or revolutions do we have? So it's like one and a half. 540 degrees equals 360 degrees plus 180. So I have my full revolution plus a half a revolution. So my um, Angle is going to be a quadrantal angle, like so. And my theta goes, winds around once, and ends up here. Okay? So uh, what point, if this is a unit circle, meaning a circle centered at the origin with radius one, what would be the coordinates of this point here? P equals negative one, zero. Okay? So the cosine of theta is simply the x coordinate of p, which is on the unit circle. The sine of theta is the y coordinate of p, okay? So from here, we can just get those values by inspection. So two, the cosine of theta, which is 540 degrees, is equal to the x coordinate of p, which in this case is negative one. Okay? Um, and then the sine of 540 degrees is equal to the y coordinate, which is zero. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Okay. Note that the cosine and sine, and in fact, for that matter, the all six trig functions of 540 degrees returns the same value as if I had used 180 degrees, right? Because I'd land at the same point. Or if I'd used negative 180 degrees for any multiple of, uh, you know, uh, 360 plus any multiple of 180 degrees, I'm going to get the same trig function values, okay? So um, moving right along. Um, I'd like to try, uh, we've done quadrantal angles, so now let's do certain uh, angles that are not quadrantal um, and find the exact values of trig functions of those angles. So starting with pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, okay? Trig function of pi over 4 radians, which is 45 degrees. So. First of all, to see this, I'm going to draw um, the unit circle with a central angle in standard position uh, of 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to get some points P. And if we could find the coordinates of P, we know the radius of the unit circle is 1. So if I could find the coordinates of P, I'll thus be able to determine all six trig functions of 45 degrees. So this is a 45 degree angle or pi over 4. Okay, uh, radians. So if I uh, go from P and extend a perpendicular down to that horizontal axis, I end up with uh, a right triangle that way. Okay, so let's take this right triangle and extract it from the circle. And we actually have a special right triangle, which I hope you remember from geometry how the sides are related. So we have a 45 degree angle, a hypotenuse of length one, which is the radius, and the other angle is complementary to 45 degrees, so it's also 45 degrees, right? So that makes this uh, what's called a 45, 45, 90 triangle, or an isosceles right triangle. So it can be shown, so these two uh, legs have the same length. It can be shown with the Pythagorean theorem that each of those legs must be root two over two units long. Okay. And we can see 
that from the Pythagorean theorem if I just verify, if I add the squares of the lengths of the legs, then we're going to get the square of the length of the hypotenuse there. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we would have uh, a would be root 2 over 2, b is also root 2 over 2. Does that equal 1 squared? It should. So the square of root 2 over 2 is going to be 1 half. 2 over 4, right? And then the next term is also 1 half. So when I add this, I get 1. So that verifies that, that um, those dimensions are correct for that right triangle. Okay? So by the Pythagorean theorem, each of those legs, uh, since it's an isosceles triangle, they each have to measure root 2 over 2. So that tells us um, where P is at, right? So P um, is just the x distance and the y distance, since it's in the first quadrant. So I'm going to say that P has coordinates root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2, okay? So from here, I can find all six trig functions of pi over 4. So let's go ahead and, and do that. over 4, or 45 degrees, so I'll interchange between radian and degree, uh, you know, readily, okay? So the sine of pi over 4 is equal to the y-coordinate, which is what? Over. Cosine of pi over 4 is equal to the x-coordinate, the tangent of pi over 4 is equal to y over x. Similarly, our reciprocals of cosecant pi over 4 equals 1 over y. The secant of pi over 4 is 1 over the cosine of pi over 4, 1 over x. And then the cotangent of pi over 4 is the reciprocal of the tangent of pi over 4, so x over y. And so let's do those calculations. So sine and cosine can be easily obtained just from the coordinates. So what would the sine of pi over 4 be? Root 2 over 2. Similarly, the cosine of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. <coughs> what would the tangent of pi over 4 be then? Is 1. So that's going to be 1. Root 2 over 2 over itself equals 1. Um, and then taking reciprocals, uh, what would be the cosecant of pi over 4? So the reciprocal of root 2 over 2 is 2 over root 2, right? And if I rationalize the denominator, what am I going to get? 2 root 2 over 2. Canceling the 2s, we just get root 2, right? Okay? So. This is going to be root 2. And similarly, the secant of pi over 4 is also the reciprocal of root 2 over 2. So skipping this process, I get the same result, root 2. And then the cotangent of pi over 4 is the reciprocal of the tangent of pi over 4, so that's just going to be 1. Okay? So is that straightforward? Okay. And that is summarized in a table. Um, Table 3, page 376, second row, okay? See, see that right there, okay? Any questions about that? So let's try evaluating a trig expression here. So um, let's go ahead and try number 42 from the textbook, section 6.2. is there for you in blue. Yeah. 
find um, 2 sine of pi over 4. plus 3 tan of pi over 4. It's useful to just commit at least sine and cosine of pi over 4 to memory, okay? Once that's memorized, the other four trig functions will follow as will multiples of pi over 4 um, by using symmetry on the inner circle. Okay, so every multiple of pi over 4 is going to either be on a diagonal or be on a quadrantal angle. Okay, so you can use symmetry or quadrantal angles during multiples of pi over 4. So the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So I just replace that 2 times sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 plus 3 times the tangent of pi over 4, which is 1 from our previous calculation. So if I simplify, I get root 2 plus 3. Okay. Make sense? Cool. Any questions? All right. So moving on uh, to uh, 30 and 60 degree angles. Um, so 45 degrees should be pretty straightforward. So 30 and 60 degree angles. We'll do the same kind of approach. Uh, we'll represent, say, a 30 degree angle as uh, an angle in standard position on the unit circle. Uh, we'll get a special triangle that results from that. Uh, find the legs of that triangle. You know the hypotenuse would be one. Uh, we'd have a 30, 60, 90 triangle in this case. And then um, we can then find the sine and cosine values based on the uh, coordinates of that point P. So first off, um, pi over 6, theta equals pi over 6. So if I have a unit circle, represent my angle in standard position. So it's going to be in the first quadrant. And then I get a point P. So I have a 30 degree angle here. OK. And then if I drop a perpendicular to the horizontal axis from P, I'm going to get a 30, 60, 90 triangle by dropping this perpendicular down here and then extracting that triangle uh, from the circle. We know the radius here is 1. So if I have point P, I'll have to determine the coordinates there. So extracting this bad boy, I have. 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And I know the hypotenuse is 1. So from geometry, you may recall a shortcut for finding the uh, dimensions of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and just use that shortcut. And again, we could verify with the Pythagorean theorem that we've got it right. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the shorter leg is half of the length of the hypotenuse. So that puts this dimension at 1 half. Okay, the longer leg is going to be root 3 over 2 times the length of the hypotenuse, so that puts the horizontal leg at root 3 over 2. And so we can see um, by the Pythagorean theorem, if I take the sum of the squares of the two legs, I'll get uh, the square of the hypotenuse. So root 3 over 2 squared plus 1 half squared should equal 1 squared. So root 3 over 2 squared works out to 3 fourths. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So sure enough, 3 fourths plus 1 fourth equals 1 fourth. So that shows by the Pythagorean theorem um, that we got it right there. Okay? So the horizontal dimension is going to be the x coordinate. The vertical dimension will be the y coordinate. So that puts P 
having coordinates of root 3 over 2, 1 half. Okay? So from here we can find the six trig functions of pi over 6 by the same approach we did with uh, pi over 4. I'll go ahead and take a moment to do that and then we'll check our work. Cosine of pi over 6 is that value. This part of it is root 3 over 2, which is my x coordinate. Tangent of pi over 6 is y over x, which we can simplify. So that's um, 1 half over root 3 over 2. Um, if I simplify the fraction, I get 1 over root 3. And if I rationalize the denominator, that works out to just root 3. Um, sorry, root 3 over 3. I was thinking of another 3 would cancel out. So, same 3, you do too much math in your head. So, root 3 over 3, right? So then, um, similarly, taking reciprocals, uh, the cosecant of pi over 6 is the reciprocal of the sine of pi over 6, so 1 over y is going to equal 2. Um, the secant of pi over 6 is 1 over x, which is going to be 2 root 3 over 3. Similarly, uh, the cotangent of pi over 6 is x over y. So if I take, um, that's going to give me, um, so I have uh, root 3 over 2 over 1 half is just root 3. So I can just do the algebra here. Um, so root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half equals root 3 over 1, right? Okay, so we found the six trig functions of pi over 6. So note that co-functions of complementary angles are going to be equal. So cosine and sine are co-functions of each other. Cotangent and tangent are co-functions of each other. Cosecant and secant are co-functions of each other. So complementary angles are angles whose sum is uh, 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So Pi over 3 is a complementary angle to pi over 6, so I'm just going to have cosine and sine switched, uh, cotangent and tangent switched for pi over 6, uh, and cosecant and secant switched. And we'll just verify that uh, using the same approach. So for pi over uh, 3, let me just uh, do pi over 3 here. So we'll get the same kind of situation, except this time we have a 60 degree angle, P, you know, <coughs> P would have to be, 
So if I take my triangle, I'm going to do the same thing, drop down my perpendicular. And there's a 60 degree angle right there. Mm. Okay? So we just turn this triangle on its side. Essentially similar arguments. So 60 degrees, 30 degrees, hypotenuse is one. So that means the side opposite the 30 degree angle would be one half, and the side opposite the 60 degree angle would be root three over two. Okay? And it's the same proof as the 30 degree case. Alright? So I can fill in my coordinates. The x coordinate would be one half. The y coordinate would be root three over two. So let's change these, update these to pi over 3. So what's the sign of pi over 3? Root 3 over 2 is just the y coordinate of t. So 60 degrees is pi over 3, right? Mm -hmm. So root 3 over 2, which was the cosine of 30 degrees, right? Remember, co-functions of complementary angles are equal. The cosine of pi over 3 would be the sine of pi over 6. So that's going to be 1 half, or based on our point p, the x coordinate is 1 half. Um, the tangent is going to be root 3. Tangent of uh, pi over 3 is root 3. So I'm going to take y over x, root 3 over 2, divided by 1 half is root 3. The cosecant of pi over 3 is the reciprocal of the sine of pi over 3. So 2 over root 3 equals 2 root 3 over 3. And then similarly, the secant of pi over 3 is the reciprocal of the cosine of pi over 3, so that's 2. And the cotangent of pi over 3 is the reciprocal of the tangent, so 1 over root 3 equals root 3 over 3. A few things along this fill in the values there. Okay. And once again, all that is summarized in... Um, Table three there. So you should memorize that. Okay? You know, if you memorize sine and cosine of pi over six, pi over four, and pi over three, you can get all the other trig functions and all the other quadrants from that. Okay? So it's not, you can reduce the amount of memorization by just working with sine and cosine and remembering relationships for all the tri other trig functions to sine and cosine. So um, I have some handouts here. This handout is a unit circle. And you can go ahead and fill in the table on the handout yourself if you wish. So um, the handout you just received, um, not, not this quest, but um, subsequent quests, you, I'm going to ask that you memorize uh, these, these uh, angles in the unit circle and their trig function values. Um, so the first handout, one side you have um, 
sort of a representation of the unit circle. These rays correspond to 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, you have a table here which you could fill in, and then you have labeled triangles, labeled right triangles, okay, to help you arrive at those values, okay? The handout you would receive on a quest, uh, such as quest two, for example, um, you might receive this handout with the triangles unlabeled, okay? Uh, and that would help you perhaps reconstruct uh, those values if you've forgotten any of them, okay? <laughs> now, it's helpful, uh, you know, to, to understand the geometry behind this, but uh, eventually it'll be useful to take some shortcuts and learn uh, ways to uh, uh, improve your efficiency at memorizing stuff. So one mnemonic that, that I uh, like for remembering the sine and cosine of uh, these angles in the first quadrant uh, and the quadrantal angles zero and pi over two are as follows. So if I have a mnemonic for the first quadrant, well, it's really for uh, the first quadrant and zero and pi over two. So I have theta in radians. Let's just do radians and uh, leave the degrees to you. So I have zero radians pi over six radians, pi over four radians, pi over three radians, and pi over two radians. So pi over two is just 90 degrees. Okay, and then why don't I just fill in degrees as well. So theta degrees is zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. So this is a cool little pattern. Sine of theta is going to follow the following pattern. So um, I have root of zero over two equals zero, okay? Root one over two is gonna be one half. Sine of pi over six is one half. Root two over two is the sine of pi over four. Root three over two is the sine of pi over six. And root four over two, which equals one, is the sine of pi over two. Okay? So it just, by coincidence, happens to follow this cool little pattern. Root zero over two, root one over two, root two over two, and so on, as you go uh, through that table. The cosine can just, you read the same values in reverse, okay? So, in the other direction. So cosine of theta, I'm gonna have root four over two is the cosine of zero, root three over two is the cosine of pi over six, root two over two is the cosine of pi over four, root one over two is the cosine of pi over three, and root okay. zero over two is the cosine of pi over two. So that's a nice little trick that uh, you can use to help you remember. Yes? Is it root one over two or one over two? Same thing, okay, it's just, it's, this helps you see the pattern if I write it in this form. Okay. This simplifies to just one, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is so you can see a pattern and remember it easily. Okay. Um, and another thing that I used when I was taking trig back, uh, way back in the day, was that um, I used, uh, for angles of pi over six and pi over three, um, you have uh, your point on the unit circle, say with pi over six, you can just look at the unit circle, the x coordinate appears to be about halfway between the origin and the point one zero. So x would be one half on this circle. The y coordinate's a little closer to one than it is to zero, so root three over two is a little more than halfway to one, okay? So I know one dimension's gonna be one half, the other one's gonna be root three over two, so just the one that appears to be halfway across is one half, the longer one's gonna be root three over two. That's reverse for uh, the angle of pi over six. With pi over four, sine and cosine both equal root two over two. Okay, and that's, uh, you can see with pi over four, the two legs would be about equal length, so you know in that case it's both gonna be root two over two. So that's how I visualized it in Math 112. Whatever works for you, use that method, okay? So, any questions about that? Okay, so um, 
Like I said, the summary here is in table three, um, which you can consult as needed. So um, if we don't have questions, I'd like to move on to multiples of uh, pi over four, okay, and pi over six. <coughs> That can be done using symmetry. using some examples, okay? So let's take a look at um, number 52. So I'll just say use, <coughs> uh, find a point on unit circle. Use symmetry. And that's just to get the coordinates of that point. From that you can get the sine and cosine and then you can get the remaining truth functions uh, using relationships, identities, okay? Um, so 52 in section 6.2 is we want to find the six trig functions of um, 11 pi over 4. So 11 pi over 4, how many degrees is that? Try to do that mentally. Remember, two pi radians is one full revolution. So it helps to say 11 pi over 4 is uh, 2 pi. That's 8 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4. Similar to uh, how I did the degrees, um, <coughs> where the angles greater than 360 degrees or less than uh, zero. So I would say that. Um, 360 degrees plus 3 pi over 4 is 135 degrees, so I have 495 degrees is 11 pi over 4. Okay? Everybody follow that method? Cool. So let's represent the angle. Unit circle. So um, I'm going to, uh, to get my 11 pi over 4, I wind around um, once to get two pi, and then I go another three pi over four, which is 135 degrees. So 90 degrees plus 135 degrees takes me to here. Okay, so that's 11 pi over four radians. So I have my point P, and if I were to draw a triangle, since this is a multiple of 45 degrees, the legs of that triangle should be equal, right? It's an isosceles triangle. The radius is one, or the hypotenuse. So what would be the coordinates of P using symmetry? So the X coordinate, since it's in the second quadrant, is gonna be negative, negative what? Root two over two. Negative root two over two. The y coordinate is going to be positive one. Root two over two. Root two over two. Okay. So immediately I can get the sine and cosine of 11 pi over four. That's equal to the sine and cosine of three pi over two, of 135 degrees, right? Because I just repeat the values every 360 degrees, okay? So if I were to my trig functions. Very simple. I'll state my argument here to 11 pi over 4. So 
So what is the sign of 11 pi over 4? So looking at P, the sign is the y coordinate, right? Mm -hmm. So what would be the sign of 11 pi over 4? It's root 2 over 2. And similarly, the cosine of 11 pi over 4 is the x coordinate of P. Negative. Negative root 2 over 2. The tangent is the y divided by the x, which is going to be negative 1. Tangent of 11 pi over 4. And then the cosecant two over root is two. 1 over y. So 2 over root 2 is going to be uh, just root 2. Okay, does anyone need to see the algebra behind that? 2 root 2 over 2, the 2's will cancel and I just get root 2. Similarly, the secant of uh, 11 pi over 4 is going to be what? Negative 2 over root 2. Negative 2 over root 2, that simplifies to just negative root 2. I'm kind of skipping some algebra here, I hope you can fill in the details. And then the cotangent of 11 pi over 4 is 1 over the tangent of 11 pi over 4, which is negative 1. Okay? Questions about that? Cool. Um, and uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and try um, 54. Let's just do the sine and cosine to kind of speed things along. And then the rest you can get using uh, formulas. is to find, I'll just do sine and cosine. So sine of 13 pi over 6 and cosine of 13 pi over 6. Okay? So by the way, 13 pi over 6 is equal to 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. So I'm going the same thing. How many revolutions is 13 pi over 6 represent, or partial revolutions? So 2 pi plus 1 pi over 6. So that'll help you sketch uh, the angle. So basically, I have 390 degrees there. Uh, 360 degrees plus 30 degrees is 390 degrees. So you'll see as you go on, it's actually easier to work in radians than represent the point. It's going to be in the first quadrant. I represent the angle. So for my 2 pi, I'm going to wind around once, one revolution, and then plus another 30 degrees. Okay? So there's my theta. There's 13 pi over 6. And so um, my point P, if I were to draw my right triangle, uh, that makes a 30 degree angle with a horizontal axis, right? So what would be the coordinates of P? Root 3 over 2. And, and one, half. One, half. 1 over 2. So the six trig functions of 13 pi over 6 are the same as those for pi over 6, okay? So I'll just do the sine and cosine. So thus, sine of 13 pi over 6 is equal Can't to 1 half, the y coordinate. Yeah. And then the cosine of 13 pi over 6 is the x coordinate, which is root 3 over 2. The remaining trig functions you can get by reading they're the exact same values as for pi over 6 or by um, just using your formulas uh, y over x for tangent, 1 over y for cosecant, etc. Okay? Any questions about that? Doing good? Cool. So um, let's study a little bit how to do this stuff on the calculator.
um, get as far as we can, and then there's just a little bit more to go in this section uh, about uh, a circle with radius r centered at the origin, how do you do the trig functions uh, for a circle, a more general circle with radius r. So the calculator stuff is really easy. You just have to select degree mode or radian mode as needed. Let's uh, try an example. <clears throat> so this is number 68. We want the cotangent of 70 degrees. So we don't have a way of finding the exact value, but it's not hard on the calculator. What mode do we want for this problem? Degree mode, because our angle is in degrees. So to select degree mode, see the mode key next to second? Push that, and scroll down to the third row, select degree and push enter. Okay. So then the tangent, notice that we don't have uh, buttons for cosecant, secant, and cotangent, but we can get those by taking reciprocals. They're not these negative ones, those are inverse trig functions, so don't confuse those with reciprocals. So cotangent of 70 degrees is 1 over the tangent of 70 degrees. So I can then do 1 divided by the tangent of 70, and I get about 0.364. And then next example, the sine of pi over 8. So pi over 8 is in radians. No units are stated, so that means radians. So I want to switch my calculator back to radian mode. Or mode, radian. And so I want to do the sine. So find your sine key. And then the pi symbol, shift, exponent key, pi over 8. Everybody follow? Enter is about 0.383. Okay. So looking at your unit circle, that should be a little bit less pi over 8 is a little less than pi over 6, so the y coordinate should be a little smaller. So that should be a little bit less than 1 half. Okay, 0.382 is just a smidge under 1 half, right? So that's consistent with what we expect based on our unit circle, right? Okay, so um, I guess we'll just stop here. I'll, I'll get to uh, the last objective in 6.2 um, when I reconvene on Tuesday. Thank you so much. Okay, um, the quest is over. 6-1, 8-1, and 6-2 just up through the quadrantal angle stuff. So the pi over 6, pi over 3, all that is not going to be on this. We're not allowed to use notes on the quest, uh, so it'll be closed book and closed notes, but you will be allowed to use a graphing copy. You'll need a copy. So we take it at the start of class, right? It'll be at the end of class. Uh, so, so at the end of the second hour. Okay? Oil yes, the quest like will be at the end of the second hour. So that's always going to be how it'll be. Um, that way, if, uh, you can ask homework questions in the beginning. You can show up a little late without penalty. Um, you can leave early and you're done early. So, okay. Have a good day. <laughs> Thanks for having me.